What's up guys? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Fastlane to automate code push releases while still maintaining flexibility in how and where we deploy these code push releases. We'll start by creating a lane for code push for iOS and then we'll create a separate lane for Android. We're going to need to pass in parameters from the command line and access them within our FAST file. So we can use options to access parameters passed in from the command line or access parameters passed in from one lane to another. Okay, we're going to get the current version. We're going to use uh, this fast lane action get version number. This is going to grab the current version in the Xcode project, but we could also get the version from the App Store if we wanted. So it's Xcode project. It's going to be in the iOS folder. React native. React native fastlane dot Xcode project. And we'll have a target of React native fastlane. So let's also create a lane for Android. We'll call this code push Android. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to get a current version here. But in this case, we'll get it from the Play Store. And get it from the Play Store using the action Google Play Track Release. This fast file is written in Ruby. Um, I only know enough Ruby to be extremely dangerous. Uh, I've only learned enough just to basically automate releases with Fastlane. So this is so there's options, it's is parameters that we can pass in to this code push lane from the command line. If you're not familiar with code push, you can push a release over the air to the app and it'll update the next time somebody you know closes and reopens the app. Or you can pass a parameter mandatory. So the next time they open the app, it'll force the update and force the app to reload. So we're going to pass in an we're going to allow the option to pass in the parameter mandatory just in case we need to like force an update, you know, if something is broken in our app and we want to make sure that we force that update. You know, it's kind of jarring for the user experience for the app to reload, so we don't always want to force it, but we want to have the option to do that mandatory update. So we're going to create another lane and we're just going to call this one code push and we're going to call it from both iOS and Android. Lane code push. So call from call them from both. And we're going to pass in the current version into both lanes and we're going to pass in mandatory and this is going to be coming from the options so this is coming from the command line options that we pass in and the way you access that is by colon mandatory so I'll just copy this here. Okay, so we have the start to our iOS or Android code push release. Okay, we'll grab the mandatory from the options.
This is what we've passed in from calling code push. We're going to be using code push command line interface to send these releases out. And to make it mandatory, we use a dash m. So that's why we have, uh, we're assigning this mandatory string here. And this will become a part of our command that we run. We need to get the app version, but we also want to have the option to only update certain releases. You know, uh, we don't want, there's going to be lots of versions of the app out in the app store, and we don't want to be updating every version that's live, or maybe we do, or maybe we only want to update the newest version, or, um, you know, all minor versions or all major versions. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a little interface. We'll take some input through the command line so we can choose which versions we want to target. We'll create, we're going to create another, a, a lane called select app version. And we'll pass in the current version that we're going to get from the options. Okay, so let's build another lane. We'll make this a private lane because we're only going to use it within the quote code push lane. First thing we need to do is get the current version from the options. So we want to give the options to select all versions, only the current version, only the current minor version, or the current major version. And to do that, we need to kind of split up this current version so we can create some more options. So we'll create current major. So we'll get the current version, we'll split it, and we'll get the first one of the split. And just for good formatting, we're going to combine X and X. We're going to join those. And then we're going to get the current minor. Do something very similar here. Take the current version, split it, and then we'll slice. Take the first two. We'll add an X onto the end. And then we will join them together. So now we need to be able to take input from the command line. We'll use ui.select. Okay, so we'll ask the question, what version do you want to target? Simple. And then the second parameter is going to be a, an array of possible answers. We First possible option is just to target all users, every version in production. The second one is just only target the most recent major version. And we'll pass in the major version. Oh, that needs to be current version. No, current, current major. I mean, it's literally three lines up. I don't know how I messed that up so many times. 
the next option will be the most recent miner. Very similar, current miner. And the last option is to only target the, the exact current version. So UI.select will return whichever option the user chooses. And then we'll assign that to a variable. Target version label. And then we'll check what target version label says. So next we'll exit us out of this lane and return whatever variable is to the right of it. Only based off a condition that we set. So if our target version label matches all, if it has this text all, then it'll return this at this wildcard asterisk, which means we want to target every single version. But if that doesn't match, then we want to return the current major if the target version label matches the you know oops matches the text major okay same exact thing for current minor if target version label matches minor then we'll return the current minor and if it doesn't match any of them, the only thing that's left is the current version. So we'll return the current version. Back in our code push line, whatever we return, we'll assign that to the version. So we've let the user choose which version they want to target. Let the user pass in a parameter, whether it's mandatory or not, to update this version. And before we actually make this update, because this is a live in production update, uh, let's just do one final, you know, sanity check and, and, and ask you to, con to confirm and make sure they chose the right version and uh, we're ready to ship it. We'll do this. We'll say if, we're going to use UI again, but this time we'll use UI confirm. Going to code push the version that they selected to production. We're going to ask them to confirm. So we'll add this if else here. So if they don't confirm, then we will just print out a little error message that says not going to push. But if they do confirm, then we want to go ahead and we want to push the new release out. If you remember from the other video in this series on automating screenshot creations, when we ran the detox command, we had to go up a level. So we're going to go up a directory. We'll run the code push command, which is app center code push release react um, dash a. This is the app name native. We'll select the environment production. 
So if you're deploying to multiple environments, um, you could select the environment through the command line, just how we did with the version, and then pop that down here. And instead of hard coding production, put in whatever uh, selection the user made. So we'll also put in the version. That's and then the mandatory string. And then we'll add the output directory. Then we'll just log a little uh, confirmation or error message depending on what happens. So we'll say status, result, command. So if the status shows not successful, what we'll do is we'll just log a little error message to the console. And we'll say, you know, this command failed with the status of And if it doesn't fail, we'll just add a nice little message that says finished. So that's it. We can run code push iOS to push to the iOS version. We can run code push Android to update our Android version. We'll be able to select the app version, choose whether it's mandatory, and then push it to production. Okay guys, so let me show you what this looks like when you run it from the command line. So this is running from a different app uh, that's actually in production. So I'm not gonna fully ship the release, but I just wanna show you what it looks like. It asks us what version we want to target. So we can type in the number four, select the current version, and then here's our final sanity check. You know, are you sure you want to code push this master branch to production for users running 1.2.0 version? So I'm not gonna hit yes, because this is a real live app. Um, but uh, if I did hit yes, then it would ship the code push release. If I hit no, then it would back out. So we made it guys. This is the final video in the fast lane series. Um, if you did watch all of them or any of them, you know, really just thanks for watching. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, I hope you guys have gotten something out of it. If you have any questions on this video or any of the other ones, you know, just post them down in the comments and, uh, you know, I'll try to help you out. Uh, you know, hit the subscribe button because Fastlane's done, but I got more React Native videos uh, that I'm going to start working on. And you know, if you if you enjoyed the video, hit the like. You know how you know how algorithms are. You know, got to hit that like button. Need some comments, otherwise, the video is not going to show up in YouTube search. So um, you know, appreciate any of that. Uh, thank you, guys.